Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. As always, I'm excited to be with you today. I have got a great guest coming on the podcast to join me. She's actually been on the podcast before. Her name is Kenya Christian. And for those of you that may know Kenya, she is uh, just a woman extraordinaire. That That is, she's an artist. She is a sommelier, working her way up there, up the ladder of sommeliers. And and she brings so much to the table on so many different levels. And Kenya and I actually met a couple of years ago, and I had her on episode 53 of the podcast back in February of 2020. You need to check that podcast out. It was at the time about the 1619 Project, which was something that Kenya was working on for her gallery, as well as expanding that into, I think, the Rogers Historical Society. And there was an extensive presentation of the project that she was working on. The artwork was out, out, absolutely insane, but we wanted to invite Kenya back on the show because she's working on a new project for her gallery in Two View Art. And uh, it is a, it's art gallery and studios, and she's having an event in February. And I said, you know what? I want to bring you back on to talk about this new event and also to talk about some of the initiatives that are near and dear to her heart in terms of exposing more people to the arts and especially getting more African-Americans involved in the art scene here in Northwest Arkansas. So without further ado, Kenya Christian, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. Well, it's good to have you back. And I mean, it's been two years. Of course, we correspond all the time on social media. We are always chatting each other up, seeing how, you know, checking in. And this pandemic has been more than a notion, I think, for all of us. But I think it's just great that you, you know, you have not, as we were saying before we started recording, you have not let any time lapse in the things that you're working on, whether it's trying to become a master sommelier, which is, I think it's a, that's a huge accomplishment in its own right. And I mean, you've forgotten more about wine than I would ever know, or the average person would ever know. But I mean, it's certainly, I applaud you for going down that road and it's exciting to hear that. Hopefully we'll have even just a few minutes to talk about wine, but more importantly, just the art scene in Northwest Arkansas you know, slowed down during the pandemic. But the idea was that I, I, what I noticed was that there were a lot of artists that were still creating throughout that period. Definitely still creating. I think what we found was that the effects of being isolated and away from each other, artists had to figure out a way to express that, to bring that out to, and it becomes something that's so internalized that the only way you can do is to create, to yeah. produce, to in order to deal. Yep. So, yes, the art that came out during that time was just fantastic. Yeah. No, I mean, that's exciting. So what was the thing for you that, you know, what, what motivated you throughout this period of time when it came to art? To really get down into my gut, you know, and figure out what was motivating me to do this. After so many years and kind of the the graphic art scene and the marketing agency type scene, and then to be have everything shut down and not be creating in that way, not be producing, you know, writing press releases or 
working on web graphics or newspaper articles or what have you, not doing that and then being like, okay, what do I want to do? Right. And at the time I was, I was really, you know, pursuing that exhibit, which was Reflections of the Black Experience that featured the 1619 Project. I was really pursuing that. But then in my gut, when that got shut down, it's like, what's left? What do I do? Yeah. And so definitely just kind of looking inward and then how was that? I expressing that on the canvas produced, I felt like some of my, my favorite pieces to date Yeah. during that period of time. Do you feel like you produce more art in this period of time than you normally would have? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I was able to um, have more unique opportunities to produce art too. Yeah. So, and I know some of your friends like Shelly Muber and, and others that, that have just kind of gone off the rails and just create, create, create. I mean, a lot of artists that I ran into during the pandemic, that's what they were doing. I mean, that's all that they knew. So that's what they did. Definitely. I was creating, but then I was also uh, really taking a deep dive into the wine industry and learning that too. So when you put the two together, you know, I just went there, you yeah, know, yeah. and didn't come out until it was time. Oh, now it's time to get vaccinated. Okay, great. And then, you know, then the rest is what we're living right now. But sure. definitely during that time, it was it was all about art. It was all about wine. Yeah, well, it's a good combination. So, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, you <laughs> can't beat yeah, you, you can't beat that. So now a good friend of ours, and I want to give a shout out to her is Karen Wagaman. Karen is at the Rogers and Lowell Chamber of Commerce. And I would have to say, and, and this is no shade on any of the other chambers of commerce in Northwest Arkansas, but Rogers and Lowell Chamber of Commerce is probably the most integrated. And I, I, yeah, they just have the best communication. I mean, I hear from them like on a daily basis. There's always something going on. I tell people all the time, and this is for anybody living here or anybody thinking of moving here and you're going to start a business, you probably should join, no matter where you live, you should consider joining the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce. I would so. absolutely 100% agree with that. When I moved here in 99, the first really connect, the real connection I had to the community of Northwest Arkansas was, in fact, Rogers and the Rogers Lowell Chamber of Commerce. And the biggest projects that I worked on at the agency that I was employed at were projects that involved the chamber in Rogers yeah, and then eventually the convention and visitors bureau in Rogers. So I have, yes, you, you, as they say, preaching to the choir right. <laughs> as far as what the chamber does. And especially with Karen, Karen is like the center spoke of right. a wheel, yeah. right? She is literally what I want to be Yeah, as far as being able to make the connections and to help uh, businesses and well, the art community, the art scene in Rogers is largely centered around what she's been able to do. Yeah. And I mean, she's only been here five or six years, but she has made significant inroads. And I think that's a prime example for anybody thinking of moving to Northwest Arkansas. And that was not where I was going with this, but I just thought I would mention it because, you know, she came in, really found a place for herself and has expanded that to the point where she is a just a natural connector and she brings so many disparate parties together to have a relationship. And I think that's really important. Oh, I do too. Yeah. So shout out to you, Karen. And we really <laughs> appreciate you. I, she was introducing us as if she was doing something. Because, I know, right? And, well, and, she, she, I think she forgot that she actually introduced us two years ago. Right. That's what <laughs> I thought was so funny, but that's just because she's so busy out there connecting people. And, and I appreciate that so much. And I thought it was funny when I saw that. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. And, <laughs> and I was glad just for the reminder, because I, I was thinking for a while that I was like, man, I got to get Kenya back on the podcast just to kind of talk and find out what she's doing. But this is the perfect time to do that. So I want to talk a little bit about the Black History Month Reflections of the Black Experience. It's an art exhibition at N2 Plus View Art Gallery and Studios. It's running from February 4th to March 12th of 2022. So give us the kind of the genesis or background behind this experience that that is about to take place. And what are you hoping to accomplish? So Two years ago, it featured the 1619 Project. But I think as I watched people come through and view the exhibit and things that have happened in our country since then and the art that was in the exhibit and the artists who participated in it, it's morphed into something so much bigger than that now because I was able to even include student art. I was able to 
tour or do, give tours to students from high school, uh, the Arkansas Arts Academy. And, and then I was able to talk to students at the Don Tyson uh, School of Innovation. And one thing that I, I felt like the takeaway for me personally and something that I hope that I imparted to them as well mm-hmm. is that we're all part of the black experience. Right. Because black history, as we are now talking, you know, going into February here soon, where we're highlighting black history is actually American history. Yeah. And I think that's how we need to start to look at this so that we're not separating out what happened to Africans as they were brought here to this to these shores and how this country was essentially built on their backs, on Mm -hmm. their labor. Mm hmm. Right. And so what we need to look at is this is American history. It's all inclusive. And today, if you saw what happened to George Floyd, you're part of the black experience because you witnessed that. Right. Right. If you saw any part of Ahmaud Aubrey's murders, the people who murdered him as part of their trial, you're part of, of the black experience because you saw the video of yeah. how he was treated. So as we talk about the black experience and we're talking about reflections of that. I want it to be people of all ages of all races of all artistic practices to be involved in that. So yes, the 1619 project was kind of the bridge yeah, leading into how to present that to Northwest Arkansas. It was a framework, but looking at Northwest Arkansas and having experienced that exhibit over the last two years and what it did, it's like, okay, now we need to get everybody in this. I need to see everybody's reflection. What are their thoughts? Let's talk about that. Right. Because going forward, that's how we communicate with each other, how we learn to treat each other and how the systems that are in place that we see as not being equal, not being balanced. We can figure out together how to fix that, those things and and balance it out. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, it seems like, you know, a lofty goal and it is. But why not try? Yeah. Right. What do we have to lose as far as having those conversations and trying? And I've always said that I think art is a little is a therapy. And so the things that hurt us or things that are afraid of on the inside, if we use art, we can talk about those things. And sometimes it's an easier pill to swallow. Yeah. Well, you know, like I I, I love that. And I think as you were saying that, you know, you, you said it seems like a lofty goal. And I would just simply say that any goal that is not acted upon is really just a wish. Yeah. Right. So you've, you're acting upon that. You're saying, okay, how do I bring different parties together and expose them to this and let them have a, a greater understanding and a clarity of thought around Black art, around the ideas that emanate from Black art and why the art is the way that it is in the first place. Right. And I think that it's also a way for artists not be competitive with each other, right? Like we... We're, this is just the way I see it and you see it that way and you see it your way. Let's talk about that. Let's view it. Let's f- find appreciation in that. And it's not about, well, you're doing that and she's doing this. It's no, we're doing this together. Right. You know, it's this is it's all I've ever is. Uh, you know what? I, like I said, I want to be the Karen of this. Of this yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Karen Wagaman of this exhibit is to bring people together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I, and it's really cool to uh, not to interrupt you, but it's really cool to to now have a gallery of my own, a space of my own to have this. But then also as a board member of the Rogers Experimental House to have the Rogers Experimental House come forward and say, hey, we want this here, too. Sure. Right. And so it'll be there. And then Java dudes, shout out to them down the street who said, hey, we want some of this Arkansas Public Theater. That is my second or third home, I guess you could say, if I was established anywhere. You know, they've said, hey, put some of this here, too. Sure. You know, so to have to see the the art community of downtown Rogers come together and say, we want this. Right. I mean, we got to take it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, Rogers is kind of in a renaissance period, right? I yes. mean, the downtown is being revitalized. I was down there around Christmas time when they had the big parade. And I was like, oh my gosh, where are all these people come from? I mean, it was insane. But what they're doing, and I mean, they've had some movie festivals on the on the downtown area. And Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you said that. So like Rogers Short Film Fest. That's coming up and they're just doing their own thing. They're doing they're being unique and doing their own thing and embracing this. 
and it's going to grow. It is growing. This would be the second year for it. It's coming up in March. And so all of this is happening at the same time. Reflections of the Black Experience is also going to be downtown Rogers. So that's where it's happening. It is. It really <laughs> is. So, no, I love that. So your gallery is located where in Rogers? So I'm right on 2nd Street, okay. North 2nd Street. I always, well, this past summer, I could say there's a lime green food truck in my parking lot. Shout out to Mike and Nacho Taters. <laughs> He's shut down right now for the season, but it's actually the sweet A to sweet B, which is Studio 300. A lot of people recognize Studio 300 as Jim Mangold's studio and what he was doing with Meals on Wheels. So that's our building right there on the corner of Maple and Second. Okay, Maple and Second. I'll make sure that we put that in the show notes so people know how to get there and find it. And we'll put links to your website and all that so they get the hours and everything. What was it like corralling? How many artists are involved in this project? So far, we've got 12. That's the number we had last year. And as I was mentioning to you, I'm hoping for 24, okay. right? Yep. That's my goal, you know, to be able to talk to you today and to, you know, to share on social media is it's really about everybody. Like I want all these artists that I know were so prolific <laughs> over the last two years yeah. and have something to say to, okay, now let's put it in the exhibit. Let's see it. Yeah. Share it. Absolutely. And can you tell us just a little bit about some of the artists that are going to be participating in this event so far? Right. So I'll highlight, just give off a couple. Leona Hunter Wade. She is an older artist. She's black. She's also a resident artist at my gallery. And to see her and how, talk about prolific. I mean, she's just here in the last, uh, I would say, two, three months. Mm -hmm. She's really just been producing, producing, producing. And so I'm excited to have her art in the uh, exhibit. And then there's Joelle reached out. I think I, I think most people probably know her by her first name, Joelle. She's got a big piece that she wants to show. I think it's five foot by four foot oh, or man. something like that. And I, she's like, oh, I don't know if I can, you know, I don't know how to transport it. I'm like, girl, we'll figure it out. Right. You know, right. I want it to be seen. Let's get it out there. Let's put it up and, sure. and, and share. Samuel Hill, I'm going to be putting back up his portrait of John Lewis. The fact that the Rogers Experimental House has, we've got a large TV screen there now. And so there'll be some interactive to this exhibit. And one of the things I hope to highlight or be able to show is John Lewis's famous speech mm -hmm. that he gave. And so we'll have that going. And shout out to Samuel. I'm going to share this and I'm going to tag you because I want more of your art because he's also been very prolific in creating art. And he's got this awesome mural. Down, I think I believe it's in, in Bentonville right now. Sure. That's amazing that, you know, I want people to associate him with that and then also to see his other art in the exhibit. OK. All right. So you've got a good group of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're like I said, there we've got about a dozen and there's a few new artists that I wasn't aware of that have gone on to artonthebricks.com and have registered there for the exhibit. And I've been able to look at their work and it's out of this world. I'm so excited to have so many different pieces of art in addition to some of the art that was up last year. And then myself, I've been, like I said, busy. Busy. So yeah. it would be nice to share for people to come in and see some. It's different when you see it on a computer screen or right. on your phone versus right. actually seeing it in person. Seeing it on social media versus seeing it in, in, in real life. Exactly. So IRL, as the cool kids like to say. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, tell me this. You know, and I, as I was sitting here listening to you talk, and I know we, I kind of brought it up to you casually when a couple of weeks ago when you had posted something and I said, oh, have you ever thought about NFTing it? And I'm curious to know your thoughts because as a practicing, as an artist, and since the last time we spoke, non-fungible tokens or NFTs, as people call them, have become all the rage, right? And it's another way for artists to share their work, to create some type of connection with themselves and the artwork that could live potentially in perpetuity. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this burgeoning marketplace for artists. It's tough, right? Because part of me wants to stick my toe in it, right? Because of like what you said, it is an opportunity for some of these artists who would never be able to show their art, right? Because 
thinking about what my mission for my gallery is, is to help emerging artists. Well, there are emerging artists out there now who are making thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars selling their artists NFTs. Yeah. So I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. And I want in on that. But then I look at it as, you know, as a 40, uh, almost 46 year old, you know, really trying to protect her coins. It's like, do I really want in on that? You know, yeah. <laughs> because there is an initial investment, right? In order to, what is it, how they say it? Well, you have to you mint. pay to yeah. play. You got to pay to play. And it, there is some cost involved. And, you know, I just think that there are all kinds of opportunities out there. And I think if they can figure out the cost factor, it'll be interesting to see right. what it does for artists. Because I always tell people, it's like, I think nowadays, because of technology, because of where we are, you know, this whole idea of the, and I'm using air quotes now, the starving artists, you know, maybe that will become a coin phrased from a bygone era because now artists are not as marginalized and are given access and agency in a way that they've never been before because of the blockchain, because of cryptocurrency. And and I mean, that's that's a real reach to make the connection. But at the same time, is it? I mean, Beeple sold a piece of art that he'd been working on. I mean, he's been an artist. He's been a practicing artist for a long period of time. It's not like the guy just rolled out of bed one day, shot a picture, and then sold it for 60 plus million dollars. I mean, this has been something he's been doing. I mean, drawing, uh, practicing art every day. Yeah. No, I hear you. I mean, I I, I agree to a point with what you're saying. The other thing that that scares me a little bit or, or causes me to be a little bit wary of the NFT or the blockchain, the crypto is the, I guess they call them the gas price. Yeah. The gas price and the, and the amount of energy that it's taking, the carbon footprint right. that this movement has. And they got to figure that out too. Yeah. I guess there's downsides to everything. And, you know, if I had, you know, a couple thousand dollars sitting around and I didn't know what I was going to do with it, which that's unlikely because I would probably buy a bottle of, domain Romani Conti, yeah. you know, if I had that sitting around. But if, yeah, I, I may put my, t- try it. Right. You know, because I've got a lot of large works that, you know, not a lot of people have space for. I have a lot of people who admire the work and who love it, but they're like, well, you know, I've got a room, it's 12 by 12. Right. You know, an eight foot ceiling and, you know, I can't put this piece of artwork in that room. So I get it. That would be, to me, a prime candidate of what I have that would be great to try in the NFT market. But I got to get build up my bravery points first no. and do a little bit more research on yeah. it and and really decide, you know, which way I want to go with it. But yeah, I mean, big ups to the ones that do and who right, are able that are to do that. Advantage. I mean, I just see everybody kind of throwing their hat in the ring. And, right. and like, as, as I've heard some people say that. You know, it's going to end badly for some people oh, in terms absolutely. of uh, in terms of what they're doing. And it's just because, you know, everybody's trying to catch the wave and make a buck. Yeah. But I think those that are genuinely artistically driven and understand their the value that they bring to the table from an artistic perspective, I think the long tails, there's some tremendous opportunity there. Yeah. 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 And just to kind of paint a picture for anybody listening that might be saying, well, I still don't fully understand this thing. The benefit of the blockchain and art is simply that you can create something, A, that can't be copied, and for an artist. Like, let's just say, for instance, Kenya sold a piece of art to me that was great. And then all of a sudden, Kenya blew up, or and I was able to sell her art for 30x what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. In the blockchain, if Kenya were to have sold me that same piece of artwork as an an non-fungible token, she can attach what's known as a smart contract to that artwork that affords her the ability, depending on how she creates the contract, in perpetuity to get a percentage of any sale of her artwork that's sold in the future, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of liken it to like if Picasso had a bunch of hand drawings, which we all know became super valuable, like super valuable, if his family was able to get a just a small percentage of the sale of those hand-drawn pieces of art down the line, they would benefit from it. And that's one of the benefits of the blockchain is that it has a chain of custody. You know who owns it, who created it. And depending on the contract that you write up surrounding that artwork, 
you can create an opportunity for an artist to benefit from future sales of their creation, right. which I think is valuable. Oh, it definitely is. And there are a lot of artists who are doing that. And right now, because of it's like you said, the the gaining popularity of the marketplace for artists to put the art out there, everybody, pe- buyers are looking at that and they're picking and choosing which ones they want because some of the, as you say, I, or I guess the easy way, the royalties, the percentage fees that goes back on future sales are looking at that and like, hmm, that's a little high. You know, that one's too high. And they're looking for the ones that have very low or no, you know, so it's you got investors that are also, you know, picking and choosing. You got mm-hmm. artists who have flooded the market. So you've yeah. got to do some marketing for yourself. Right. Sure. You, know, you can't just stick it up there and be like, OK, come and get it. Yeah. You know, there's some back end that you got to do on it, just like we do now as an artist. You know, we have to try to sell ourselves, sell our brand to get the attention, to get people to look at our look at our nfts so yeah i mean i think you know i mean it's it's still early it i is. think it's going to be really interesting but i as i look at artists like yourself and i mentioned shelly earlier and those that i get to kind of see you create your art on the back end the, the work that it takes to create it it's like man you you can really appreciate the time and effort and you know what went into creating that process right. so i mean i think it's valuable and as more people get to experience that, I think they're going to attach intrinsically more value to those art works of art than they have historically in the past. Which would be amazing. Because yeah. that's really, as an artist, I think it was oh, Bob Saget, you know, we're, he's on our minds and our hearts right now. Absolutely. We're he just passed him, away the other day. Right. We're thinking about something he said, I think it was to Tiffany Haddish, actually, in an interview where... You know, he said people look at comedians or actors or artists and they're like, wow, you got to have a lot of guts. You know, you got to have a lot of, you know, grit to go out there and do that. And he's like, no, it's not that. He's like, we have to do it. Like, we have to get there and create. And that's how, as an artist, that's how it feels. Like, I don't have a choice. Yeah. It's yeah. not about grit. Yeah. Or, you know, guts or whatever. It's a, it's a need. It's yeah. vital. I have to do this. Yeah, you know, and it's so funny. You said something to me earlier that I, you know, I don't, I sometimes don't think about it. And you probably struggle with this as well, but I have to do podcasting. I just, I have to press record. I have to have somebody in front of me. I have to have a conversation. I have to always be learning. I have to always be opening up new doors in my mind to the possibilities. And I just, I feel like if I'm not learning, I'm dying. Yeah. And that's, you know, because people always ask me, man, you, you put so much into this podcast and you don't really get paid for it. And I mean, yeah, I have some sponsors and I was sharing that with you and shout out to signature bank for sponsoring. (laughs) I am Northwest Arkansas for 2022. We've got some more sponsors coming online, which I can't wait to share, but you know, this thing's taking on a life of its own and I didn't create it technically to be a commercial entity. I created it because I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to connect with people Mm-hmm. And I wanted to make people feel good after they heard those stories and learn something in the right. process, even if it's something small. And I can't stop. I know. I get it. It's the same, you know, with inviting people into my gallery space and pouring wine and talking about dirt and <laughs> <laughs> terroir and food. I have to. It's I don't have a choice. This is it's intrinsically me. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. part of me. So. Yeah. And it's and as I mentioned to you, like this exhibit is a bit of a labor of love, right? It was a labor of love two years ago. It was in 2021. Sure. It's going to be in 2022. Yep. The fact that I'm going to bring in black owned wineries to share out of my personal stash with people, that's a labor of love. And I know when I talk to these wineries, because a lot of them I have kind of a personal relationship sure. with, I call sure. them up on the phone and they're like, oh, thank you so much. This is amazing. Thank you for sharing our wines with people. And it's like, I have to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it brings so much joy to my, <clears throat> I mean, y'all just, it just, I don't know if, if you have the same feeling, but it's like more happiness in giving than receiving. Sure. That is like the most profound truth that yeah. there is because, oh, it makes me feel so good. You, well, you're sharing your platform with others. And right. that's kind of what I feel like I like to do with, yeah. with this. So, and. I'm glad you talked, you brought up wine. Um, So we'll kind of close out just kind of walking people maybe quickly through the whole, you know, what is it like to be or or to study, to try to be a sommelier? And more importantly, what have you learned about wine that has been truly an aha moment for you 
in terms of the process that goes into making, creating wine, the people behind the wine, and then just the process of how it gets to our dinner table or at the table at our restaurant? Well, oh, that's... I know, that's a lot. That's, but. A, that's a lot. I'll try to like keep it short and sweet. Basically, levels to the to being a wine steward, right? So there's the introductory level, which is where I've been floating for right. the last uh, two and a half years to the certification level, which is where I'm trying to get to, where you do have that exam. It's a written exam. There's a little bit of service involved and there's a little bit of deductive tasting, sure. line tasting, where yep. you have to identify a red and a white by vintage, the varietal, the region. Sometimes people can even go all the way down to the winemaker. And so there's that. And then there's advanced, right? Advanced, right. I mean, ugh, sky's the limit. And then there's master level. Master level is where you have to be invited to even test for that. And there's a thesis involved. It's very involved. And there's the, why there's only a couple of hundred of them on, in, on the whole planet. Right. So you think about that for a minute, how difficult it is to become a master. It's harder to do that than become a brain surgeon. So Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. They, they, it, it, there's, they make it tough. Yeah. But to wine and how what the, the thing that really what I've learned is that it really truly is divine. Right. And it's more than just the, the bottle that you open with your friends on the patio. It literally starts with ancient soil. Right. Volcanic soil that's millions of years old and how that impacts the grape and then the sun and the the climate and where it sits on the plant on, on our on our beautiful earth you know there's just this certain strip you have a latitude where wine grows that's perfect yeah right and it and it makes it so much more divine i guess yeah you know the best word i can say and then how different winemakers can coax out those qualities of wine to give it that final experience that you have, that explosion in your mouth of the food and the wine together. It creates an experience and it's, indel it's indelibly marked on your brain. Sure. Right. So I always say at the end of each one of my painter tours that the wine is the occasion. So even if there's no special occasion, guess what? You opened up a fantastic bottle of wine and there you go. Right. And I have on my wall my conquests <laughs> of all the wines. I could tell you exactly when and how and what was happening every time I opened one of those up. So Yeah. Well I'm yeah. Clearly obsessed. No, no, it's totally fine. And I appreciate that. And I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in this area that can appreciate fine wine. So, you know, there's just there's a whole movement behind that. Right. So it's, it's a living thing. It is. And so you open it up. Yeah. And yeah. then it slowly breaks yeah. down and you get to enjoy that process. Yeah. And we have some local vineyards here. Sassafras Absolutely. And, and a few oh, others. Shout out to Post down there in Altus. Yes, they are making beautiful wines and people in Arkansas need to give them a lot more credit than they're given. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I, and I think people should be aware of that because a lot of times people think in Arkansas, well, they don't have that kind of stuff. Oh, but no. I'm like, yeah, it's. Oh, no, sir. They've got a winemaker who knows exactly what she's doing and a family who's been doing it for, for decades. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. So is there anything else you'd like to leave with our audience before we close out today? Yes. Go chiefs. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, I was going to do at, it. At the day of recording this, it's right before the wild card weekend. And, <laughs> um, and, and actually the chiefs are playing my beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. Anybody that listens to this podcast, on a regular basis, knows my family's from Pittsburgh, so <laughs> I rep black and gold all the time. I'm even wearing a black and gold hoodie I, today. Exactly, I see. But it. it's got my "I am Northwest Arkansas" logo on I it. I thought which about is, wearing my Chiefs. No, uh, but today you, I was like, no. I, I don't know. Respect. I mean, you literally have your art gallery I and do. studio black hoodie on, I and do. I have my "I am Northwest <laughs> Arkansas" black hoodie on, and that's it's awesome. it's it is awesome. I love that. So that that's cool. So we're wearing our hoodies today. This is, you know, what I, I talk about. <clears throat> Black art, black culture. This is this is black excellence right, right here. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. We'll take it. We'll take it. So, but Kenya, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. And again, just for everybody's edification, the dates of the program. So the exhibit will be running at uh, my gallery, Interview Art Gallery Studios, downtown Rogers from February 4th 
until March 12th. Okay. And then it'll, uh, we'll have an opening reception at my gallery on the 4th where we're going to open up some black owned wineries. We're going to open up some fantastic wine and have a good time. And, and then on February 10th, which is the second Thursday of each month, Art on the Bricks. Right, right. That will, will open up their reception for the Reflections on the Black Experience at the Rogers Experimental House. Okay. So All right. two different times to, well, actually, you can see it that entire period of time at my gallery, and it'll also be up at the Rogers Experimental House. But there won't always be wine. So, But they're all, they're, 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 well, they're, yes, if yeah. you want to experience and want to get to know some of those black owned wineries that are just, just blowing up right now. Come on February 4th. Perfect. Perfect. What's the best way for anybody to contact you if they want to get in touch with you? Oh, goodness. All kinds of ways. They can go through my website, which is KenyaChristian.com. They can go to the gallery website, which is InterviewGallery.com. Okay. Definitely on Instagram. I'm Kenya Christian. Yep. And that's Kenya, K-I-N-Y-A, Christian. Kenya Christian, like Christian. Right, right. So, exactly. So thank you for saying that because I know sometimes people. I know. Well, I mean, I know it, but I mean, some people don't. So yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Well, perfect. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing and just coming down here to Fayetteville and sharing a little bit about what you're doing and what you're working on. And, and we're excited to promote this program and we can't wait to hear the fruits of it. So thank you so much. Well, thank you too, Randy. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, folks, that's another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To learn more about us, or to read or download the show notes from today's episode, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. You can also listen to this podcast and sign up for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. The better, so yeah, so just consider doing that. And then I certainly want to encourage you, you can follow the podcast wherever you listen to it. iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, it doesn't matter. Consider checking us out on one of those platforms. And if you can, consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Remember, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you back here next week for another new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.